हेलो नमस्कार यू ऑल आर वॉचिंग अस ऑन ई विद्या चैनल नंबर 11 एंड बिसाइड दिस यू ऑल्सो वॉचिंग अस ऑन अवर ऑफिशियल यूट्यूब चैनल दैट इज एन सी ई आर टी ऑफिशियल माई नेम इज रुजन राजपूत एंड आई विश यू अ वेरी हैप्पी दिवाली फ्रॉम अवर फैमिली सी आई टी एन सी आर टी होल फैमिली एंड टीम इज विशिंग यू अ वेरी हैप्पी दिवाली सो स्टूडेंट्स लेट्स बिगिन विथ टूडेज टॉपिक एज यू कैन कनेक्ट विद अस थ्रू अवर कॉन्टेक्ट नंबर दैट इज ऑन योर स्क्रीन डबल एट डबल जीरो डबल फोर जीरो डबल फाइव नाइन एंड बिसाइड दिस यू कैन ऑल्सो मेल अस योर क्वेरीज ऑन अवर मेल आई डी डेट इज डी टी एच डॉट क्लास इलेवन एट दी रेट सी आई टी डॉट एन आई सी डॉट आई एन बिसाइड दिस दिस वेरी फास्ट मीडियम टू कनेक्ट विद अस दैट इज अवर ऑफिशियल यूट्यूब चैनल लाइव चैट बॉक्स सो पुट ऑन योर क्वेश्चन ऑन अवर चैट बॉक्स एज वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद अवर टूडेज टॉपिक दिस इज अ टॉपिक फॉर क्लास इलेवेंथ इकोनॉमिक्स इंडिया एज अ फिफ्थ लार्जेस्ट इकोनॉमी सम स्टेटिकल इंटरप्रिशन तो इस टॉपिक के साथ हम स्टार्ट करने जा रहे हैं पांचवी सबसे बड़ी अर्थव्यवस्था के रूप में जब आप भारत को देखते हैं तो कुछ सांख्यिकी व्याख्याएं जब हम करते हैं तो क्या पाते हैं हम भारत के बारे में सो लेट्स फाइंड आउट अबाउट अवर इंडिया विद मिस्टर श्रीनिवासन अवर टूडेस्ट गेस्ट इज एम वी श्रीनिवासन सर यू आर मोस्ट वेलकम इन द स्टूडियो and as you are a professor of economics deess ncert is nai delhi sir as a, uh, our today's topic is a uh India as a fifth largest economic so how student can connect their self uh, with topic uh, yeah. yes uh, thank you uh, shrijan and um, thank you viewers students uh, parents teachers and others this topic is very important in our life you may be seeing the newspaper and other media that uh, recently uh, there is a euphoria that people are very happy that india is becoming a fifth largest economy in the world so you may be as a student you may be interested in what is this on what basis we can come to know about it so i am just in trying to uh, disclose certain uh, understanding about this gdp called uh, gdp called gross domestic product so uh, we are going to discuss about it and uh, we are also uh, uh, posing some questions to you so let me request uh, srijan yeah. to read some questions and uh, after reading the questions uh, if you listen to the session and at the end of it there are uh, if you are able to answer all these questions it shows that you are able to spare some time uh, watching this uh, event yeah sir uh, before uh, going to the question my uh, first question uh, is to you is that how we judge uh, india reached on fifth position yeah. on the world this is based on the uh, a data hmm. called gross domestic product okay many of you students you must have studied in class 10 uh, uh, in in social sciences what is gdp yeah okay so uh, based on the current gdp hmm this uh, understanding is there there are about uh, many countries each country is coming out with the concept uh, the data on gdp so about which we are going to discuss so this idea of fifth largest economy is based on the total value of gdp of india when compared with other countries wow uh, this is a good uh, thing that we are standing on fifth and uh, i wish we are standing on first as soon <laughs> in future uh, so uh, that's on your screen also i read some questions to you Uh, that is uh, after reading this session you know all the questions but uh, let's see your screen i'm reading these questions for you what is the total value of gdp of india we are uh, we are going to know what is india india is an is assuming country uh, mr shrinivasan show you in the session and the next question is what was the rank of india in the year 1960 next question is tea leaves used for making tea in the hotels is a final good tick mark it true or it's false in which years india's rank in gdp is the lowest this is your fourth question and fifth question is how much percentage is india's gdp when compared to that of usa in the year of 2021 and next question sixth one is who developed and published gdp data in india Next one is what is the value of India's GDP per capita in the year 2021? Uh, last question number eight is 
Environmental damages are taken into account in GDP's estimation. Take mark as a true or false. So let's begin with today's session with Mr. Srinivasan. Thank yes, you, Srijan, for reading this question. Um, I'm sure that uh, Srijan also will try to answer some questions if it is possible. And I'm sure that all of you viewers will be able to answer this question. Okay. Yeah, if I'm not able yeah. to do, Mr. Srinivasan is with us. Yeah, yeah we are yeah. having uh, in the <laughs> end, uh, um, on the last slide, we'll be having all the answers to the question. Look at this. See, uh, look at this screen. What people are doing here? Uh, people. Um, so they are transplanting paddy. Hmm. Okay, so this they is a work crops. in agriculture. Yeah. Okay, so they are farming. This is an important activity um, in India. A, a major section, nearly forty-five percent of people are engaged in this activity. It's an important economic activity in the hmm. country. Look at the other. Uh, what, what these people are doing? They are doing stitching. Very good. So these are the people who are working in a garment industry, uh, maybe prefer, maybe in uh, Tirupur or somewhere in um, South India. And uh, this is one activity. It is called, see the earlier activity is called agriculture and primary sector. This activity is called manufacturing sector. Yeah, we okay. are also watching in this paper women's uh, along with uh, men's. Yeah. So uh, this is a second activity. This is one of, uh, one of the important activity and recently we came to know that about 45% of the women working in factories are employed in uh, this kind of uh, industries. Yes. Then uh, look at the third activity. This is an uh, office. Um, yeah. This activity is coming under the called service sector. Hmm. For example, I am uh, with you today and Srijan is also with you today. This uh, office work and my uh, work, they are all coming under the activity, economic activity called service sector. Yeah, okay, we also so, assume our father is doing uh, this like of office jobs. Yeah, so many people are working in uh, many big cities, so, so teaching, banking, railways, transportation, many more economic activities, they are coming under the term called service sector. Okay, so these are the economic activities people are engaged in. And um, during this session, uh, please uh, remember that I am going to recall your understanding about um, uh, gross domestic product. So some, some of these issues we have watched, uh, you have watched in the same channel sometime back in class 10. Uh, so, or you must have written, studied in class 10. So, now you are in class 11 and I am just recalling some ideas with regard to gross domestic product. So, the gross domestic product, if you look at, um, what is gross domestic product? Yeah, we are uh, starting in, you said, uh, what is GDP? Uh -huh. I think so GDP what is, yeah. is stand for yeah. gross domestic product. Yes, so gross domestic product is nothing but all the economic activities that you have seen so far. If you put monetary value, if you put monetary value to all these economic activities and then if you calculate the total value, that is called gross domestic product. Look at the screen. So I am just putting a, a, a simple definition. The total monetary value of final goods and services produced within a country in a given period of time, usually a quarter or month or in a year. So what? why I am putting this uh, underlined words? I am going to explain to you that uh, total monetary value means all the economic activity, for example, some people are employed in factories, some people are engaged in farming, some people may be engaged in service sector activities. So if you uh, value all this into money terms, in India, it is rupee terms. In other countries, for example, if it is uh, America, it is in dollar. In Australia, it is Australian dollar. So, if you Japan, it is in yen. So, different countries are having currency. So, if you are converting this into a monetary value in the form of their own currency, you are getting the gross domestic product. So, the monetary value refers to the in terms of currencies. Okay. What is this final goods? Hmm. The term final goods, you need to uh, understand. So, let me look at the word. What is this final good mean actually? So, uh, I am showing you a uh, material here, for example, here, look at this. What is there in the screen? Uh, it's a it's biscuit. A biscuit. So, it's a biscuit is a final good. Why it is final good? Because it is, in the, it is in the form of a packed one, it is available and it is going to reach you and me. We are going to eat it actually. Yeah. Okay. After, an, after an hour, uh, when it will reach <laughs> around uh, 4, 4 o'clock, we will take it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I will give it to you. <laughs> so, the first idea that the final good means something which is reaching finally to the consumer, the eater, the yeah. user. That is called final goods. Okay. Whereas, if you look at the uh, other, uh, let me show you something else here. So, look at the screen. So, this is a uh, oil packet. Okay. This yeah. oil is used. But can this be a final good? 
actually it, it, it's a final good when we consume it yeah so the oil cannot be consumed in raw so hmm. it is not a final good number one oil okay. also become final good only if it is reaching the house like my house hmm. okay but if it is going to a hotel for making food and all those things it is coming under the intermediate goods or raw materials okay so the, that is the difference between the final good and the intermediate goods mm -hmm. whereas look, for example the other material so this is uh, look at this so if you look at the box here it's a kind of murku and uh, mysore pak is there okay this is the final good it is used by you and me okay yeah. this is final good so you understand the difference between the final good so the uh, and intermediary and raw materials yeah. so raw materials means for example if this uh, oil is used if the oil used by the hotelier that is raw material for them yeah, so i the, got it so yeah so the okay. gdp includes if you look at the uh, definition again if you look at the total man monetary value of final goods and mm. services goods and services means for example i already told you the goods means tangible visible form of goods services means for example my service i am working as a teacher here so mine is uh, considered as services okay so the value of goods and services produced within a country within a country means for example it may be india hmm. or it may be australia or it may be sri lanka or it may be pakistan it may be china so any country within the domestic territory territory of a country it, this has to be produced so the whatever is produced uh, whatever is called gdp it is the produced within the geographical territory of a country okay and then finally the, there is one more thing called year hmm. generally gdp gross domestic product the abbreviated term is gdp gdp is estimated for the whole year sometimes government may publish for every third year three months that is why it is called a quarter also a quarter here refers to three months so every three month the gdp is there so gdp data gdp as an uh, estimate it is the health of a country okay people generally consider that all the goods and services produced within a country if you convert that into monetary value you get the gross domestic product so uh, if you look at the uh, so i already told you that what is this uh, how it is estimated yeah. let me give you example if you look at i am just giving you um, how it is estimated hmm. there are three ways gdp estimated one is that the if you good if you calculate the output hmm. outputs the muruku that i showed you the biscuit packet i showed you so all these outputs are given value then you estimate it hmm. i'm coming to a, a, uh, again so the only output and the value added in the different process of making biscuit hmm. it is called output method then there is something called income method what is income method income method means for producing commodity there are many factors are used land labor capital organization okay for example uh, for uh, in a, for a farmer land is used so if you pay if you get the uh, uh, for land rent is paid yeah. for a laborer wages are paid okay for capital interest is paid like restraints rent yeah, we pay yeah. so for entrepreneurship somebody is producing profit is his income so if you add all these incomes then you arrive at gdp that is called income method the mm. third method is called expenditure method the expenditure method means in the whole over in every country there are three people are there one is that households families the second is the factories companies small producers sellers okay then the government government is also spending lot of money so the government factory companies and then households if all these three people are spending lot of money if you add all those expenditure for example uh, my family and whatever the money i am spending that is or your family whatever the amount is spent by the family and the companies for example the biscuit factory whatever the amount is spent by the biscuit factory hmm? so if you add all the expenditure of the companies firms and the households and the government so because government is running hospitals government is running um, um, schools government is running big machinery law and order machinery okay so government is also laying roads government also running railways so if you add all the amount spent by the government plus households by the company and this is called expenditure method 
yeah so we got the same answers from these th uh, three type of uh, uh, calculations yes you are correct so if you uh, if you get the gdp gdp from income method expenditure method and output method all of them will give you the same uh, number same okay. number okay so who publish the uh, gdp if you look at the screen in my understanding within india national hmm. statistical office which is located in uh, delhi but it collects data from from village onwards so it collects the data from all over india so it is publishing the data on gdp if you want to know about gdp statistics you can go to internet or you can go to reserve bank because the reserve bank of india is also publishing and then ministry of finance in its report of economic survey is also publishing and uh, this gdp is estimated it is not simply only for india all over the world people are uh, estimating gdp for that purpose many many international organizations for example the world bank imf uh, oecd european commission uh, united nations international monetary fund all these organizations are coming together they evolve a system of how to estimate gdp what are the aspects you have to include what are the aspects you are not going to include so they come out with the guidelines that guidelines is called system of national accounts system of national accounts 1993 so these guidelines are used by all countries to estimate the gdp so they are publishing the uh, gdp of uh, the con their country or other countries by the basis of yearly or uh, monthly or uh, quarterly how so international organizations generally publish for the yearly okay okay in case of within a country for example india you can get the uh, gdp data for every 3 months whereas generally global practice it annually it is available okay, okay. or after getting this three month of uh, data uh, we are uh, calculating it's on basis of uh, year then or we are working with this on three months basis also. so the after the four quarterly yeah. four data it is pulled together it is combined mm -hmm. together it is published by the uh, um, national statistical office and then from national national statistical office it goes to the international organizations like world bank okay so i already told you that there are three methods through which gdp is estimated i am going to give you one example of how using the output method value added method gdp is estimated look at the screen in the <coughs> you example i already told you that this is the biscuit okay this is the, if you look at the um, here i already told you biscuit is manufactured okay so uh, what happened this biscuit is made of wheat okay this biscuit is made of wheat so what happened in the first stage the farmer here i'm just giving you example of a shankar farmer is making wheat okay farmer is making wheat so that wheat is called it, the value would be i'm just giving you an example imaginary example of 2 rupees okay so the 2 rupees worth of wheat in the second stage it goes to kuldeep he is a miller so what he does with the wheat he makes it flour okay so he makes into powder okay so the wheat powder so what happened this 2 rupees by from in the hands of kuldeep it, it its value added into 2 more rupees so totally how much it is 4 rupees hmm. then it goes to the third stage mr tirumal who is a baker okay so that baker is making biscuits okay or it's a biscuit factory okay you can also consider as factory so hmm. this baker he makes this biscuit or it may be, he may be making bread also okay so if you take it as a factory also biscuit factory or biscuit uh, making person he adds value to some 3 rupees okay so what happened 2 plus 2 plus 3 it is value now is 6. 7 rupees oh, seven. 7 rupees finally it goes to the grocery shop in the grocery shop john he also makes his margin or he also makes value addition okay because he also earn, earn profit so he adds 3 rupees more so totally it is about how much it is 10 rupees yeah. okay this 10 rupee is the 10 rupee value of biscuit is called final good yeah but so transportation charges and advertisement charges are they are all coming under the value added okay. if you look at the value added 2 rupees to so wherever the value is added for example the tirumal here is adding 3 rupees it includes transport expenses also okay similarly john is also adding value because he is packing it he is paying rent for the shop He is paying wages for the laborer, so he is also adding value. So when all the values are added, it is coming to ten rupees. So there are two things. What happened that the generally when the GDP is estimated, this value addition at each stage is calculated. Value addition in the first stage is two rupees. Value addition in the second stage is two rupees. Value addition third stage is three rupees. Value addition in the fourth stage is how much? 
3 rupees. So, 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3. So, this 10 rupees is called value addition. Okay. So, this is the way GDP is estimated. Okay. So, if you look at the, um, I am giving you example now. You are going to uh, calculate now. I already told you that hmm. uh, all the goods and services are converted into monetary value. Let me give you an example of estimate, you estimate the GDP value of this imaginary country called India. Yeah. I'm just giving you India, H I N D Y A. In that country, rice is produced. How much rice they produce? 1000 kilograms. 1000 kilograms of rice they produce and they are selling it for 50 rupees. Hmm. And then pulses, dal, 25 kilograms of dal is produced and the price is 150 rupees. Hmm. And the oil, oil is produced 25 liters. It is 200 rupees per liter. The fourth item in that country is cloth. Cloth is produced, again cloth is called 100 meters. So, it is 200 rupees per meter. And then they are also providing transport services. So, there are about 100 kilometers of transport services is produced in that village or in that uh, imaginary country. It is 20 rupees per kilometer. And then finally, another uh, good is produced is saloon operator. He is charging 100 rupees per person for all his services. There are about 20 persons in a whole year, hmm, he is hmm. providing the services, he charges 20, 100 rupees. So, if you, now you calculate the um, GDP of this imaginary country, okay. And okay. then you tell me in the, at the end of the uh, session, um, uh, you know what is it to be done? You have to multiply the amount with the total value produced. Yeah, quantity hmm? and the amount, amount. will be multiplied. So, you will get the GDP. And then total okay. of these. Yeah. So, uh, GDP is not a only one item. GDP is considered as, there are different versions of GDP is there. So, India is shown as fifth largest economy in one measure only. What are those GDP? You will learn in higher classes in a very detailed manner. I am just introducing in a simple manner. Okay. Yeah. For GDP, I already told you the price. In India, you have to consider the price of goods. Price of services are very important. Okay. And then market price. Market price means what is, the, what is the price prevailing on the day when you go to market to buy, to, to buy the goods and services. Okay. So, this is called market price. Every day whatever the market, the price is prevailing in the day to day practices that is called market price or it is also called current price. Okay. So, um, GDP of current price, GDP at current prices means the value of GDP estimated on the basis of the prices prevailing on the specific days. For example, the GDP is calculated for the whole year, and the prices are prevailing uh, in mm -hmm. the whole year or in different dates, they were used for GDP. So, that is called GDP at current prices. Then there is something called constant price. Why this constant price is necessary? Because for example, when you are, um, when you are producing uh, GDP, I will give you an example. Mm -hmm. You in India, we are producing um, wheat, okay. okay. Uh, we are also producing rice. Suppose we produce uh, wheat 100 kilos last year, okay. and okay. Um, it was called 50 rupees per kilo. Imaginarily, I am telling hmm. you. And then this year, we produce 100, 100 and, um, same 100 kilo. Okay. Now it is 60 rupees. Hmm. What was the last year's uh, total output? Um, 50 100. into 100. Hmm. Uh, it's a uh, 5,000. 5,000. Yeah. And this year also we produced only 100 kilos. Uh, with the amount the of 60, 60 then 60,000. 60,000. 6,000. 6, it is, if you look at the value of wheat or value of output, last mm -hmm. year it was 5,000. This year it is 6,000. 1,000 is a... 1,000 is more. Uh, yeah. But have you really increased output? No, actually quantity was the same. That's quantity 100. was the same. Yes. Because the price changes took place. Hmm. But output did not change. Yeah. Okay, so the current prices will not reflect the true reality. For that purposes, what is some, something called price deflator? Hmm. You have to reduce this ten rupee ten. Uh, you have to estimate the value only at the another price. So what happened generally? Countries what they do? They make a constant price, one year as base price. For example, hmm. suppose we produce wheat. Uh, in 1990, 1991, 1992, 93, like that, one base year is fixed, and then whatever the price prevailing, based on that price, based on that year price, the GDP is estimated. That is called constant price. Okay. okay. So this will rule out the price changes. But within a year, there is more difference. Like uh, we are taking uh, ten rupees ten of amount is 
okay but there is a lot of difference between in a year like 20 to 50 then yeah. what we so take it, it happens uh, sometimes constant. for example the tomato price recently has yeah. increased from say 30 rupees to 80 rupees okay this when you are calculating for the whole year every day calculations mm -hmm. all these things are averaged okay so that is why the index numbers are used mm -hmm. so the index numbers are used to reduce the effect of this price changes okay okay so that is why that whether it is in january 1 or you are producing in december 1 mm -hmm. december 30th see the whole year average prices are average quantity and average prices are estimated okay so this is called constant price so then the there is something called here so far we have talked about gdp produced within uh, gdp of within india or within a country we want to understand how we are performing when compared with other countries. There are more than 200 countries in the world. There are, there are low income countries, there are middle income countries, there are rich countries, there are developed countries. Okay, the, so if you want to compare how you perform, it is possible only when you compare with other countries. Okay, <coughs> for comparing other countries purposes, mm -hmm. there is something called GDP at purchasing power parity and exchange rate is used. For example, in India we have a rupees currency, in other countries different currencies are used. So what they do, they use, they neutralize for that purposes what they do, one powerful currency in the world. Uh, it's a dollar. American dollar. Okay, so what uh, people generally do, they estimate the GDP of respective countries and convert that monetary value into American dollar. Hmm. So when you want to compare, when you want to see the GDP uh, of uh, compare other countries, generally since it is um, America is leading in economically in the how we, uh, we are going to discuss now, um, it is leading all over the world in terms of its output. So American dollar is recognized as a for comparison purposes. So American dollar is used to compare or to estimate the GDP of all other countries. So generally in the international reports, the GDP is, is shown in the form of dollars. Okay. So uh, and then what has happened actually, suppose you are having a coffee in India, how much would be the coffee? Uh, around 20, 20 between rupees. 20 or 30. 30 rupees. Oh, okay. so, whereas you are drinking coffee in America, mm. how much would be? Can um, you just estimate? Uh, we can uh, calculate 20 into like dollar is standing for 80 to 90 rupees. So do you think that only 1000 to or 1000, um, 90, 90 means 180 rupees so it will be available? Uh, a coffee there would be almost 600 rupees or yeah. 900 rupees or hmm. it may be 1000 rupees also. We can take it. Okay, because <laughs> the time. country is a very rich country, the cost of living is very high, cost of production is very high. A coffee maybe here it is 20 rupees, but if you go to America, you have to spend 200 rupees. Okay, yeah. so what happened? The, 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 because of this actually, see whatever the wheat produced in India and this has to be compared with wheat produced in America. Hmm. For example, you can see the technology what technology used in India? What technology is used in America? America may be using a very, very big, powerful machines. Mm -hmm. Whereas in India, farmers are not using that kind of technology. So for that purposes, something called purchasing power But parity. we have uh, so much manpower, that's why we are uh, based on a uh, person's uh, economy, rather than uh, yeah. electronics, gadgets or everything and using in uh, copper, whatever. So yeah, yeah, so we are able to produce with the uh, em by employing more and more laborers, whereas mm. in other countries they employ lot of machinery, whereas GDP may not reflect all those uh, differences. Okay, GDP will be how many quantity you produced, how many quantity he is produced or she is produced. Okay. So when companies, uh, when uh, countries are comparing the production of goods and services, or when countries are comparing the GDP, these use of machineries and the cost of producing these things would be very much different. For that purpose, something called purchasing power parity concept is used. The, what, uh, what is happening in the purchasing power parity, you will see how it is estimated in higher classes. But I will tell you that the, um, the cost of producing or how much one dollar worth of goods will command in other countries or how much one rupee will command with other countries, okay, when compared, yeah. when compared to other countries. For example, so all these uh, countries comparisons are made to arrive at the GDP at purchasing power parity. So mm -hmm. the purchasing power parity means, for example, if the coffee is available in 20 rupees per coffee, in America also the same estimate is done actually, coffee how much would be. So if it is 20 rupees, it is available, then the same market prevailing. Otherwise, coffee price in America is included in the India's price. Okay, then what will happen? That means that we are producing at a cheaper rate. Mm -hmm. when compared with America. Yes. So this comparison is done in the purchasing power parity. So the GDP, there are four versions of GDP, GDP at current prices, prices prevailing in the 
day to day practice or prices prevailing at a particular base price that is called constant price that will tell you true reality constant price and then when you want to compare other with other countries GDP at the purchasing power parity is used. In purchasing power parity also there is a constant price, there is a current price. So these are the four, four broad types of GDP. So GDP is not a one measure, one indicator. There are four GDPs are used. Dear student, before uh, uh, knowing the chapter more, uh, let me remind you that we are going with this topic, India as a fifth largest economy, some statistical interpretation. You are uh, you also watching us on YouTube official channel that is NCERT official and on Evidya channel number 11, class 11. Uh, this is a topic of economics and Mr. M. V. Srinivasan tell you the uh, session in a very interesting way and we are now know what is GDP and uh, what is the, uh, maybe you are calculating on your uh, paper, uh, what is the uh, uh, calculation for GDP of India, India, mm. India. Yes. So, if you look at this, look at the screen, let us compare uh, how we have progressed last 70 years. If you look at the screen, you can see how much. India in 1950-51, we were mm. able to produce goods and services. Our GDP was about 10,000 crore only. It has increased to about nearly 2 lakh crores in 30 years time, from 10,000 to mm -hmm. 2 lakh crores. And then 2 lakh crores and then if you go to uh, 1991, in 40 years time, this 2 lakh from 2 lakh, 1 lakh 72,760 crores. I am just rounding off and give you the number. Mm -hmm. In 1991-92, we our GDP value increased to 6,62 crores. So uh, within within another uh, 40 years, if you look mm -hmm. at the another in 20 years time, our GDP GDP has value to almost 2,36,64,67 crores. Wow. In a okay, decade, we very, are very, uh, progress a more. Uh, so we in the last 22 decades, our our GDP value has increased tremendously. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is also now one of the reasons why we are being now ranked as fifth largest economy in the world actually. So this number would be very perplexing for you. I will give you, when we compare with other countries, mm -hmm. what, it, what did I tell you? It is generally made in dollars. So here after when we are comp okay, I calculated this uh, India graph. India in top it's 10 very countries. How you can perform in the last say about 70 years. This graph um, is, is telling you the big, very interesting story. So, India in 1960, hmm. just after 10, 12 years of, uh, 13 years of India's independence, India's rank was how much? Uh, okay, it's eight. A eight. Eight. So, this has come down to 1970 into 9. Okay. And da then in, it is going down every yes. year. Okay. In 1980, it was 13. If you look at it 19... It was a roast, roast one. So, it was 1990, it was about 11. Okay. And in... 2000, it was again it has come down to 13. Hmm. Then from 2000 onwards, India's growth trajectory is very positive. From 13 to we moved to 9th, and then from 9 we moved to 5. Okay. So what I showed you uh, this data is based on the 2021. Okay. So this is this is where you get to know that who are the top players in the world actually. The, hmm. the, who are which countries? The if you look at the top one, the blue thin blue line. That is the uh, data of the United States of America. Okay. okay. Sir, uh, there is a uh, down of a 1980s time. Means, yeah. dono hi countries jo thi wo down thi. Very good question actually. So, if you look at why, uh, you can see that uh, India has to compete with the other developed countries in a very rigorous manner. It was, the life was not that easy. So, when, hmm. we, in, when we became independent, we were all very powerized. Only about 10, 20 people, 20 percent people were educated. Our mm -hmm. industries, uh, handloom industries, handicraft industries were uh, almost crashed. India did not have a big large scale industry. Okay. So, mm -hmm. India has to perform. So, what was happening was that in 1960s, the planning commission was established and five year planning was introduced. In 1950, the first five year plan came in 1951. So, what you are, uh, the data that you are showing, uh, seeing in the screen, 1960, it is based on the, after two five year plans, India's rank was 19. Eight, like eighth hmm. rank actually. Okay. So in 1970, 60 to 70, for example, um, we, we we were introducing green revolution. Hmm. Okay. So the farmers began producing high yielding like uh, um, um, high yielding variety um, seeds. They use high yielding variety seeds, and uh, green revolution started pumping in. Whereas we were not able to 
grow uh, further our rank has come down to ninth rank in 1970 mm -hmm. it's also because other countries are also growing other countries are also for example if you see the this uh, blue line light mm -hmm. blue line um, japan so japan is also going further actually so uh, japan is going from say for a fifth rank in 1960s it is coming to third rank and it is becoming second rank in 1980 again it is uh, again second rank in 1990 Okay, so in 2000, uh, second rank. So it is also competing with, so India had to compete with actually. So in 1970, it has come down to nine, uh, like ninth actually. During the 1970 to 80, India also faced a lot of draft. Yeah. Famines here and took place and, uh, and lots of, for example, Naxalism cropped in the 1970s. And the fire plants are not delivering things. Okay, so uh, 1980, it has come down to even though the India's uh, banks were nationalized, many banks were nationalized, mm. slowly, once the, uh, like it takes time. Mm. For example, if uh, America is having a top producer, but America became free nation 200 years before. Okay, we are free mm. nation only last seven decades actually. So, we have to see also that how the countries are growing uh, faster. So, uh, in 1980s also fire plan was going and then 1990, from 80 to 90, we were able to go up from 13 to 11. In 1990s, you know what has happened? Hmm. In 1990s, economic reforms were introduced. Economic reforms were introduced. I am sure that many students, you will be studying, you know, those who are studying in class 11 in some state, like um, you may be studying Indian economy, Indian economic development, or you will come to know if you are in class 11. Next year, you will study more about Indian economic development. So, you will come to know, and even in class 10 also, the, the globalization uh, chapter, you, where you come to know about reforms. So, India introduced reforms. And in 1990s, what happened actually, uh, the government allowed many uh, liberalization policy. That means mm -hmm. uh, many companies, many economic activities which were reserved for the government only, now liberalized. Mm -hmm. Government also withdraw many uh, economic activities running their own companies. Okay. So, um, due to economic reforms, lots of things have happened actually. Many multinational companies, companies from other countries were allowed to come to India produce goods and services, they can sell or they can export. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, the uh, economic reforms has met with lot of reforms in different sectors. Okay. Industrial policy resolution came out. So, because of these policies, it took even then 1991 economic reforms introduced. But if you look at uh, 2000, during this 10 year also, our performance again 11 to 13, because these 10 years is a transition period. What happened in actually many companies which were producing goods and services in India, they were not able to compete with the foreign companies because multinational companies, they come with a lot of uh, capital and they also come with the latest technologies. Okay, they were able to do a lot of automation actually. So, these Indian companies, um, for example, I will give you uh, uh, the uh, juice industry. Okay. In 1980s, lot of juice uh, uh, dukans were there, mm -hmm. juice shops were there actually. So, when um, companies producing soft drinks, they came set up their shops, you will find the juice companies were not able to manage. Mm -hmm. Juice companies which are on the roadsides, they were all to, they are not able to sustain actually. So, I am just giving you one example, what happens mm -hmm. with soft drink and similarly for example, we were having only one company which is supplying uh, telephone connection. Yes. Okay, only it, that was also a government company. So, the mm. economic reforms also allowed that private companies also can set up telephone companies. Now, you have uh, many companies providing mobile services, even the landline services are also uh, available from the private company. So, telephone indus telecom industry has tremendously changed. Information mm. technology, eh? ITC world has uh, also started producing a lot of software for the whole world actually. So, what happened in this 1990-2000, it was a transition period. Hmm. Uh, the companies are equipping, re, uh, recovering from the pains actually. So those who are not able to face the competition, they got closed. So, the new companies got emerged actually. And they also work with the multinational companies which are coming from other countries. So, they made a tie up with the other companies, foreign companies. So, because of which the 2000, you can see from 2000 onwards, our output has, 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 has begun to grow up actually. grown. So, that is why you can see in 2000 to 2010, from 13, it has gone to our rank has gone to 9th actually. And then 2021, we are able to become fifth largest um, uh, economy in terms of gross the uh, GDP at current prices. Okay. In case of, uh, look at this actually. I'm, I was just like, uh, I am giving you another uh, table here. In this table, I am having five columns in this table. In the first column, year is mentioned. India's rank is given in the second column. In the third column, current GDP. 
what is the value of current GDP is given. Okay. And then uh, USA uh, 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 current GDP is given in terms of billion dollars and India's GDP is also given. Look at this. Hmm. In, uh, in 1960, what was the GDP of India? 37, 37. 37 billion dollars. Okay. From 37 billion dollars in, in over the 60 years time, we were able to move to 300 in 1990, 321 dollars. In hmm. 2021, our GDP has gone to 3,176. 3, Whereas, when you look at, uh, I was just taking this as a comparison purposes hmm. and this is not the only thing. There are different ways you can compare. Since the America's GDP is always, if you look at the graph, yeah, you can see that always in top, on a, uh, top. So, what is happening in that country? I was just looking at this data. Hmm. So, even in 1960s, they were toppers, but they were able to produce only 500. They were, they, so 543 billion dollars they were, but they were, still they were toppers. So, from hmm. 543, they were able to go up to 23,000 in 2021. Yeah. That means, other developing countries are also producing GDP much faster, much higher value than India. Mm -hmm. I was also looking at that, how much is India's GDP when compared with America? Whole world is aspiring to go to developed countries. Many people are going to America, wanting to go to America. But I was just looking at, I was comparing what is the value of GDP of India when compared with America. Okay, mm -hmm. so for that purposes, I used another equation. I simply put... Um, um, uh, 37 that is 37 hmm. and then uh, divided by America's GDP 543 into 100 okay hmm. so I looked at uh, these statistics hmm. um, if you look at not uh, this way uh, this is not the way I put the other way around for example let me took 543 divided by 37 into hmm. 100 hmm. how much it comes down to no. uh. I think first round, first is uh, correct. It's got a uh, 6.82. So, uh, India's GDP when compared with USA, hmm. when you look at it, we are producing 7% only. Okay. Okay. So, hmm. in 1960, India's GDP was 7% of America's GDP. Hmm. So, such a lowest value when compared with the, the richest or developed uh, country, the topper in yes. terms of GDP. Whereas, we can also uh, feel happy about it over the years. For the first 3-4 decades up to mm. 2000, we are not able to raise, we are now our share of, say, if you look at the last column, India's GDP as a percentage of USA GDP, the last column shows from 6.8 percent to, it has come down again to 5.82, then again it has gone to 6.5 and it has come down further, it has come down to 5.38 and then finally to 4.57. From 2000 onwards, you can see the positive trend. For example, mm -hmm. from 2000, in 2010, our share has gone to 11 percent. Yes. And in, uh, in 2021, it is 13 percent, 14 percent. Mm -hmm. This means that America's, India's GDP is almost about 6, one sixth of America's GDP. Yes. So, if you want to become a America, you have to, you have to, you have to move to one-sixth and then one-fifth and then half and then one. So, okay. such a long journey we all have to aspire to hmm. become a, um, the first highly ranked um, country in terms of current GDP. Okay. Then I looked at um, what is the current prices con constant prices data. This value, um, so look at the screen. Um, uh, in terms of current prices, India's GDP was about 3000 dollars, 3000 billion dollars. Yeah. I already told you this current prices will not tell you the real changes. Why? Because the price changes are happening. Yeah. It is based yes. on the daily, uh, like day-to-day uh, -day prices prevailing in the economy. Yeah. So, constant price is the right way or purchasing power parity price is the right way. So, I looked at the constant data or uh, like um, look at the, the screen. In this screen, I am showing the current prices and also constant prices with the purchasing power parity. Okay. So, if you look at uh, current prices of India's GDP, it is 3,176 billion dollars. Hmm. If you use the purchasing power parity, hmm. then our GDP value goes to 9,000 dollars, 9,279 dollars. Okay. okay. So, um, in, uh, so, it is our value because we are able to produce at a very low cost. Hmm. That is why our uh, current price value is also very low. But okay. if you are able to uh, uh, rule out this uh, price and hmm. keeping it the constant level and that too uh, when compared with the purchasing power parity, hmm. our GDP is about 10,000 billion dollars, nearly 10,000 billion dollars. Yes. Okay. So, in, in case of America also, 
Yeah. You can Why see that. Why is it going down? That uh, like in American um, USA, that is because America the cost of production is very high. Okay. The cost of production is very high. That is why there is no major difference between the current prices and the constant price. Hmm. So they even if, that means also shows that the prices are no not changing much over the years. Yeah. Okay. Prices are not changing much. So if you look at 1990, in America also it is almost double. So if you look at the table here, I am giving hmm. you the table for four uh, years only as as an illustrative example. Hmm. So American GDP at current price was about six thousand crore billion dollars in 1990. So, if you look at purchasing power parity constant price, it is about ten thousand. Mm. But if you look at in twenty twenty one, this is more or less mm. same twenty thousand uh, dollars. Yeah. It is because the prices are not changing in America more frequently. Mm. So the, that's a hidden point uh, that is not showing the actual image. So mere uh, mere GDP data will not help you to understand. You have to understand the the price changes. You have to understand the Um, how the currency value? For example, American currency is a dominating currency all over the world actually. So if you look mm. at um, from the, and also it is also used by all over all the countries. So uh, all these things may not be easily revealed in the current price data. Mm. Okay. So uh, let me move on to the uh, story of GDP. So what I did was that I looked at merely total GDP will not help you. You also understand how this GDP is produced by people. For example, in America, 34 crore, around 34 crore people are producing this 20,000 billion dollars GDP. Whereas in India, what was the population? What is the population of India? Roughly, it's about 140 crores. Okay. This 140 crore people are producing this, say, about 3,000 billion dollars GDP. Okay. So, if you calculate the GDP per hmm. capita, that hmm. will tell you how the GDP is distributed, how hmm. people are productive, because unless people are productive, efficient. you could not produce more actually so for that purposes i calculated the gdp so uh, it is given in this uh, slide if you look at the screen i showed you the uh, per capita of gdp of india and usa i am comparing just uh, for the sake of uh, understanding about gdp per capita so if you look at uh, usa gdp the usa in 1960s every individual on an annual average 3000 dollars okay around 3000 dollars hmm. Whereas at that time India's GDP was about eighty-three dollars only. Eighty-three dollars. Mm. Okay, so now American citizen or on an average American citizens are able to produce seventy thousand dollars today mm. or in twenty twenty-one. Yes. Okay, whereas India it is about two thousand two hundred fifty-seven dollars. Mm -hmm. That means what was prevailing in nineteen sixty in America now we are almost nearing that to that level. Yeah. You, it may look like we are mm. just 50 years, 60 years behind America in terms of per capita income. In terms of per capita income, we are around 50, 60 years behind America. Mm. Okay, but otherwise, if you look at I last column, I calculated how much GDP of India when compared with America. Mm. So if you look at in 1960s, um, India's GDP is almost about 3 percent only, mm. 2.76 percent. In 50 years time. Over the years, it has declined even to 1.5 percent in 1990. See why this topic today is about the statistical interpretation. I calculated mm -hmm. averages, I calculated percentages. Okay, so mm -hmm. when you use statistical tools, you will come to know the value of the GDP in a better manner. You will understand the GDP and the GDP per capita in a in a much more revealing manner. That is why the uh, the your course in class 11, you have you may be studying statistics for economics. in many schools so if you are a student of uh, statistics if you use these percentages averages alone you will get lot of insights actually mm -hmm. with regard to one uh, statistic that is called gdp okay so in gdp per capita it is we are reaching now 3.27% for example mm -hmm. if i tell you in simple terms in america on an average a, a person is producing 70000 rupees mm -hmm. 70000 dollars whereas in a similar person in india is producing only 2250 dollars okay so we have to go long way okay our uh, our population need to be more efficient mm. more productively efficient so that we are able to more produce more and more output okay so the per capita gdp per capita also uh, tells us the story of how um, how are the challenges before us actually to yes. become uh, to become developed country like usa But I in look, a percentage way, if we see 2.76 and 3.21, is just a little difference. It's very very small amount. Yeah. No, it looks like very small actually, but mm -hmm. so we have to go long way actually. 
okay so if you look at gdp per capita our rank is not that much level hmm. so it's a first column you know 2.76 and a 3.21 yeah so we it has increased in the last 60 years we were able to increase very small hmm. level actually the yeah. first column very uh, the second column gdp rank in terms of gdp per capita hmm. see the gdp we may be a fifth rank country or even i showed you for the 19 like 2026th uh, rank hmm. country in 2020 Yeah. So if you look at 2021, even if you look at 1960 to 91, our rank has uh, not in a very showing very mm. uh, reflective. Yeah. It's also be, our rank has come down from 88 to 160s. This is the rough idea. This is not uh, authentic uh, mm. estimation. This is my own estimation based on the data available from World Development Indicators, yeah. uh, WDI. So this statistics is available in the internet. You just uh, if you are using internet, you just type uh, World Development Indicators. Um, mm. from the world bank it is giving you the data for the last 60 70 years for all the countries you can compare it's a wonderful database you can use it for um, understanding about statistics and particularly understanding of, uh, about economic development indicators so if you look at the screen here i am just giving you india's rank it has become uh, what do you call like not so um, uh, uh, big actually so our rank is now in 150 out of 200 210 20 countries we yeah. are we are uh, we are been pushed down when compared with the 1960s yeah it's right. a very uh, interesting topic but uh, let's time is running so fast and yeah. our viewers are also watching to get their answers uh, as they yeah. have uh, answers let's match yeah. the answers yeah so if you look at the uh, uh, gdp is also having lot of uh, problems gdp is not something it may be a, it yes we come to know about performance of economy how healthy uh, uh, as an indicator but if you look at the gdp as a limitation it has limitations for example um, uh, some non traded outputs are not included for example i showed you look at <laughs> you can come back to this murku okay this if you look at this murku which is shown in the screen um, if you look at the um, uh, some non tradable activities for yes. example many women crores of women in their houses they uh, produce goods they produce food for us mm -hmm. for all the time yes so that particular uh, house like family uh, made goods goods made as like the murku that is been shown in this camera uh, this is made for the diwali in my house mm -hmm. but uh, unfortunately the all the effort put by the uh, homemaker is not included in the gdp mm -hmm. because it is very difficult to collect the statisticians say we are not able to we cannot do. so the uh, the non traded outputs are like not mother enough. serving their mother uh, serving uh, their all children. the services provided by the mother or father in the houses mm -hmm. they are not included actually it's very sorry state but it is one of the limitations it's of gdp actually it's a it's a uh, part it's of an important activity and uh, we can't calculate so, in a so it is not amount. it uh, but if you want to see they are putting lot of effort but that is not mm -hmm. been included in the gdp so gdp yes. has a major limitation actually and then for example gdp we know that the india has huge amount of black market black economy mm -hmm. so that is also not included in the the black economy is not captured in the gdp and then for example when you produce goods and services lot of environment is damaged for example the rivers are polluted the water is polluted or the air is polluted or the land is polluted they become salinate so uh, that is also not not coming into the gdp that is not estimated and also the technological change for example 50 years before we produce paddy uh, with the lot of human mm -hmm. human power today we produce with the lot of machinery okay this change in technology can you see that the 50 kilograms of wheat produced in 50 years before is same today same with of today yeah. no it is not because today manpower is less lot of machinery is used but gdp mm -hmm. cannot capture those technological change that is also one of the limitations of gdp so with even then with all these limitations we have no choice but to use gdp to understand the general health of economy so gdp is still considered by all over countries all over the world to understand it let me come back to the answers i'm sure you must have calculated and but there are hmm. uh, answers to the questions you remember that uh, shrijan has raised some questions so if you look at the um, answers let me ask shrijan to uh, yeah, read, read the, the answers ans yeah i read the answers for you uh, first answer is 82750 and second answer is h third is stand for false it's a false 
and the fourth answer is 1980 and 2000. Answer of fifth question is 13.62. Uh, sixth answer is National Statical Office. And seventh one is 2257 dollar. And the eighth statement is the also false. If you have answers your uh, you can also send your answers on dth.class11 at the rate ciet.nic.in. So, time to say uh, uh, this wrap of this session and I am thanking you so uh, Mr. M. V. Srinivasan, Professor of Economics, DESS, NCRT, New Delhi. Thank you so much sir for this uh, beautiful and interesting session. Thank, Thank you so you. much sir. And beside this, there is an important part of uh, information regarding your textbooks of 2023 to 2024. If you are not still, if you are still not order your textbook, you can order from this our sales counter uh, is on Delhi, Kolkata, Ahmedabad, Guwahati. That's also flashing on your screen. And for more information, please visit ncertbooks.ncert.gov.in. And you can also download the soft copy and PDF version of these uh, uh, textbooks from uh, ePartshala Diksha and from your mobile app. For more information, please visit www.ncert.nic.in. Next session is for class 12 Sanskrit. And I am uh, wrap up this session. Srijan Rajput saying Namaskar and bye.